All right, welcome back. We're gonna start turn eight with our uh, friendly HQ event check. We have no friendly HQ event. We are currently at a level of no contact. Our CO is sitting in the staging area still, which means he's in communication with the battalion. So we'll get to go ahead and activate the CO. Draw one card for that. We get a two, the CO is green, so that's a minus one, but the no contact is a plus one, so the CO is going to get two commands. And we're gonna go ahead and use one of those commands to activate the first platoon. And we're gonna go ahead and bank the remaining command, and get him up to his maximum saved commands of three. The first platoon is currently sitting in uh, cover, so he gets a plus one for cover, plus one for being at no contact, and minus one for being green, so his draw is gonna be at plus one. We'll draw his commands. We draw a five, five plus one is six, so the first platoon gets six commands. And first platoon is currently sitting in his stack with a paralyzed lat that we'd like to go ahead and try to get rallied. So we'll go ahead and issue a rally command to that paralyzed lat sitting underneath here with him. So we'll try to rally that. We draw one card because the litter team or the paralyzed team is green and we don't get the rally so let's go ahead and exhort for one more command and we don't get the rally on that either so we just use two commands to attempt to rally that and neither one worked so now we're going to go ahead and order the uh, second squad and we're going to go ahead and move into our objective card. So if you remember, objective one is just ahead in the farm. So we're going to go ahead and find the 2-1 marker. And we're going to get him ordered forward. Okay, we'll order the 2-1 forward. And of course, that's going to result in a exposed marker. I'm not going to put him in that bunker because I want him to be able to fire at anything he might reveal. So I'm going to leave him out of the bunker and hope he can find some cover in a little bit. Okay, so we've used three of our commands for the uh, first platoon. We're going to go ahead and stop with first platoon and we'll bank the remaining cards for first platoon. So he's at his maximum saved commands now. That's it for the activation phase. We're gonna go ahead and move now into the initiative phase. So we'll activate the second and third platoons in that order. So second platoon gets a draw of one. Second platoon is currently under cover. Uh, so it's gonna have a net of plus one. It gets plus one for cover, plus one for no contact, and minus one for being green. So he's gonna get two commands. Second platoon gets two commands. And we'll activate third platoon. Third platoon gets two. Um, third platoon is currently not under cover. And so third platoon is going to have a net of zero added to that. So that two is going to give him two commands. So third platoon gets two commands. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start by ordering the uh, second platoon's bazooka forward into the hedgerow ahead and again we're going to be exposing something on that uh, farm and we want to make sure we get some firepower up there to deal with that so we're going to go and move the second weapons team forward again, get to the exposed marker We'll try to find some cover in a bit. We are also going to go ahead and attempt to clear the PC marker on the marsh. And there's really two purposes for this. Number one, I'm going to get a victory point for doing so. Um, but more importantly, right now with no contact, that B PC marker is an automatic contact. And frankly, I'd like to avoid that. So what I'm going to try to do is by bringing in the second PCB marker, I've got a 50-50 chance of activating that one first, and then I'll have to draw for the other PC marker. 
So right, we're gonna go ahead and order our two three squad off of the farm and into the marsh and an exposed marker for that. And that one we will put into the foxholes. Notice we've got a casualty there. We'll want to make sure we clean that up at the end of the turn. Okay. All right, with that, we're ready to move on to the activation of our other leaders, our XO and our first sergeant. They're each going to get one command. Let's go ahead and get the, uh, let's see. Second platoon spent one command. So second platoon is gonna give up that command because he doesn't have any, he's already got maxed out as saved. Third platoon used one command and, oh, third platoon is also gonna order a ceasefire. You know what, I apologize. I actually messed up here a bit. I had moved my two-step squad over here, but I'd actually wanted to go ahead and move the three-step squad instead. Sorry, so that's the three-three moving across and into that card. And I am going to go ahead and issue with third platoon here a cease fire command. Notice he's still firing on this card where we lost, where we uh, killed the machine gun last turn. So we're going to go and drop that PDF off. That's going to be about the only effect of that ceasefire right now. All right, now we're going to take advantage of our activated first sergeant and XO. We're going to start with the first sergeant. The first sergeant is under this cover marker with the rest of first platoon. We're going to go ahead and have the first sergeant attempt to rally that paralyzed team. This is legal because it is a different phase. You normally, you cannot issue the same command to a unit twice in the same phase, uh, but this is a different phase, so it's legal for me to uh, issue that rally command here. So we'll go ahead and draw one command for the rally attempt, and we don't get it for the first sergeant. We'll go ahead and uh, exhort, and we got our reshuffle, and the exhort works. And so we do go ahead and rally the paralyzed team up to a litter team. So we'll remove the paralyzed, put a litter team in its place. We'll go ahead and get the card shuffled and we will come back and attempt to rally that litter team. Okay, the first sergeant is going to go ahead and attempt to rally the litter team now that we just upgraded to. So we'll draw one for the rally attempt. No joy, the sergeant's going to go ahead and exhort. And no rally on that one either, so we fail the rally. All right, finally, the first sergeant is going to go ahead and move back into the village and into that upper story card. And the reason for that is so that he can be available if we need to call in any sort of artillery or 50 cal fire down the road. So the first sergeant uses his fifth command to move there. He's going to end up using five of his commands. And so with the one he was allocated, he'll end up with a single saved command. Finally, the XO is going to go ahead and use his one command to order his mortars to stop firing so that we don't waste any mortar ammunition. So he's going to take advantage of that and move that. That's going to automatically reduce our heavy weapons fire down to all pinned fire because the only squad, only units firing now are those that are left in the uh, minefield that are still pinned from the prior turn. Okay, that's it for the command phase. We're going to go and draw the general initiative card now. See how we end up there. We draw one for general initiative and we get one. So with that general initiative, we're going to go ahead and attempt to seek cover 
in the farm so that if we hit anything major with that bee, we'll, we'll have some cover to deal with it. So the cover draw there is going to be three cards. So we draw one, two, and three. And we do get cover there. And because that's the farm and it has the building symbol at the bottom left of the card, we're going to go ahead and draw to see if we get a plus one cover marker or a strong building. And the draw on that is a one to three out of five gives us the strong building. And we do get a one, so we get to place a strong building marker on that farm. So we'll place that strong building on top of the marker there to indicate that's the cover level he's got. Okay, that's it for the US command. We'll go ahead and now draw for the enemy HQ event. And we do get an enemy HQ event this turn. And so we'll draw on a random 10 to see what we get for that enemy HQ event. And we get a seven this turn. And a seven on the enemy HQ event according to our briefly book, briefing booklet, is a fallback again. Well, that's interesting. We don't have any Germans on the board this turn, so there's nobody to fall back, so that's effectively no effect. So that's it for the HQ event. Of course, no enemy activity checks this turn. We do actually have a mutual um, uh, capture phase to deal with. We've got the enemy casualty sitting on our marsh. So we can go ahead and capture that casualty. Take that away. Place that down on our casualty chart. And we're ready to move all the way now into our PC marker resolution. So we have two PC markers to resolve and they're both a B marker, so I'm gonna go and randomly determine which of those two B markers to do first. So I'm gonna do that by labeling them left to right, one and two. And we'll just draw a random card to figure out which one we do first. You see we have a two on our two draw there, so we're gonna go ahead and deal with the farm first. The farm is um, a PCB, and we are currently at no contact. That means that PCB marker is an automatic um, result. We, we don't have to even check uh, draw, we automatically. So now all we have to do is draw for the uh, what package type that is. So we'll draw on a random 10 to determine the package type. And you can see on my random 10 that I get a 10. So we look in our briefing booklet to find out what a PCB 10 is. And we see that a PCB-10 is package number 2388. And an 88, 2388 is, uh, does place a VOF and is spotted. And we'll have to draw to figure out what its placement is going to be. So let's go ahead and draw for its placement. Again on a 10 and we draw a 4. Again, we check the briefing, briefing booklet and we discover that a four on the unit placement chart is going to be front at max LOS. So since there is no card in front of ours right now, we're gonna have to go ahead and draw for that card. And that card is going to be a woods card. And so that is because the dark border is going to prevent any LOS through that card. So that is going to be our max LOS. So we'll go ahead and place that woods card there. And we'll go ahead and get our markers out. So we're going to place our 88 and our trenches on that new card. Since they're spotted, we don't need to deal with placing any sort of uh, unspotted marker on that. That's going to automatically place PDF both directions then because it's spotted. And it's going to place a heavy VOF on the uh, squad that spotted it. 
It's going to be a heavy weapons VOF there. And then we've got some units that are going to be firing in it as well. So we've, we're going to have the squad that spotted it, of course. But we also have a squad here. And we still have our 50 cal up in the uh, upper story that's automatically going to start firing. So the net result of that is that we're going to get some decent fire on that right away. And our 50 cal is going to contribute to get us up to heavy fire on that. And in addition, we're going to go ahead and be able to place a crossfire marker on there as well. So we're going to have heavy weapons with the VOF of crossfire also. Okay, that should take care of resolving that PC marker. Now we'll go ahead and swing around and deal with our second PCB marker. So, oh, the other thing that happened there is because of the increase. Um, now we have two cars under VOF, so we're going to move immediately from no contact and up to engaged for our contact level. And the result of that is that our PCB draw here is only going to be three cards to find that. So one, and we got it already, and two and three. So we are going to get a contact. You see I got my shuffle card, so I'm going to go ahead and shuffle the deck, and then we'll deal with figuring out what package gets placed. Okay, we've determined that we've got a contact on the marsh, so we're going to go and draw now to see what that contact is. And on a 10, we get an 8 out of 10. So an 8 out of 10 when we look that up on our chart. is yet another strong point. So package 11 is a strong point. So it is firing at us. We do not have um, spotting on it yet. And it's going to be a squad under trenches plus, or and another card, a squad and an HMG team under a bunker. So let's figure out first what squad we're going to be revealing. So we use our magical coffee cup and we reach in and we get the 2-2 platoon so we're going to have that under trenches and we need to figure out where that's going to go so we draw on the 10 and we get a 3 we look up our 3 in our placement guide and a 3 is a front at max LOS so we don't have anybody in front of us, max LOS, so we gotta go ahead and draw a terrain card, see what we get. And we pull a village. The village has dark borders on the edge that matters, so that's gonna block the line of sight. We'll go ahead and place that unit there, and it does come on unspotted. Okay, now let's figure out where the bunker with the heavy machine gun and um, uh, other squad is going to end up. So we draw a 7 out of 10 for its location. 7 out of 10 is left front at max LOS. Again, there is nobody at left front max LOS, so we got to go ahead and draw a card. And we get open fields. Now this does have white borders all the way across, which means that we're not at max LOS yet. So we need to go ahead and draw another card. And here we get an orchard and it has the dark borders. So we can go ahead and place that orchard out there at that angle. And now we need to identify the platoon or the squad that's going to come out of there. And we get the first of the third squad. So that plus our machine gun plus our bunker is going to go underneath or go over there and again not spotted so we'll put the question mark PC marker on it. Now we need to place a whole bunch of PDFs. Well not a bunch since I don't see him. So again they're going to attack the unit that triggered them so we'll place the PDF two PDFs against our squad and they're going to get the 
uh, automatic weapons fire from the machine guns, as well as a crossfire marker. And with that, we can go ahead and pull our two potential contact markers off. And we've now cleared our board of potential contact markers. Okay, so now we're ready to move on to the combat effects phase. The only Germans that we can target right now are up here in the woods, the 88 that we discovered. So we can go ahead and compute its um, value pretty easily. We've got plus two for the card, plus two for the trenches. So that's a plus four. We have minus three for heavy weapons and minus one for crossfire is a minus four. So we have a zero net combat modifier against the 88. So we'll draw on that. And a zero is a miss. So no effect on the 88. We'll go ahead and resolve the Americans left to right as well. Down here we have a plus one for the card, plus one for the foxholes that we discovered. So that's a plus two. We have minus one for the automatic weapons and crossfire. And we are exposed, so that's another minus two. So that's a net modifier of minus two. A minus two result is a hit. We'll resolve that hit. And paralyzed and casualty. And so that's going to drop our three-step squad down to a paralyzed unit, a casualty, and the remaining step becomes a fire team. And of course the result of that is a pin as well. Okay, let's go ahead and look at our objective. Here we have minus three for the heavy weapons, minus two for being exposed, so that's minus five. But we have plus two for the card and plus three for the strong building, that's a plus five, so the net combat modifier um, on the squad there is gonna be a zero net combat modifier. The result of that zero net combat modifier is going to be a pin. Sure glad I found that building cover because that could have been a lot rougher. All right, that's it for the combat. We can go ahead and go into the cleanup phase. We have a handful of exposed markers to get rid of. We'll also be able to remove the pinned marker from the unit down in row one, column one, that is sitting in the minefield, but since the mines were flipped last turn, they're no longer gonna be pinned. I actually should have put an exposed marker on the first sergeant earlier and forgot to do that, but it didn't matter. I think that's it for cleanup on the board. We do want to make a point of noting the new units on our roster, um, but the most important thing to make a point of is that our shot with our 50 caliber there was in fact our last 50 caliber round. So we no longer have any ammunition for that heavy machine gun and need to go ahead and place a out of ammo marker on that unit. Yeah, that's gonna probably hurt us a little bit for the rest of the game. We'll flag that 50 is now being out of ammo and it flips to its actually no, it's just out of ammo. Okay, and that is the end of turn number eight.